Hi folks, Doc Jake from Sioux Nation Ag Center here. Today I want to talk about the different types of prolapses that a cow can have or that you can see in heifers in a feedlot pen. So folks, to illustrate here what we're going to do, I'm going to draw a cow on this. And from this picture of this cow, we're going to show the different types of prolapses that a cow can have or shear. That's just a happy little switch right there. Oh, this picture looks utterly awesome. Whew, art. Now that we have our lovely cow drawn, let's dive into the three types of prolapses. First type, the rectal prolapse. Wow, I'm getting a lot faster at that drawing stuff. So the rectal prolapse is a protrusion of the rectum out of the cow or steer potentially. You'll see it as being something that's cylindrical shaped unless it's been out for a little while, then it'll actually start to swell and be more circular. Um, it will be somewhere between 6 to 12 inches in length and obviously it comes out of the rectum. Rectal prolapses are something that need to be addressed in a timely manner but aren't an immediate threat to the cow's life. Our second type of prolapse is the vaginal prolapse. The vaginal prolapse comes out of the vulva of the cow and is typically somewhere in the size of a volleyball to basketball in size. It can occur at any point within the cow's production cycle, so it can be before calving, or it could be after calving, or it could be in a heifer that wasn't even bred in the first place. The third and most concerning type of prolapse is the uterine prolapse. This is what happens only after the cow has calved, and usually only very quickly after the cow has calved, within that 12-hour period after calving. Uterine prolapses also come out of the same vulvar opening, However, they're typically really big. You'll see a lot of times they'll hang down past the cow's hock. The other part about a uterine prolapse to remember is that the uterus, after the cow calves, is covered in remnants of the placenta. They make little buttons that are kind of spread all over the prolapse. So those buttons all over the prolapse are called cotyledons, or the, the caruncles. One side's the cotyledon, the other side's the caruncle. Ah, oh, crap. Cotyledon, the embryonic leaf in seed-bearing plants. Wait a minute, that's the wrong definition. Cotyledon, the fetal side of the placenta. Therefore, technically, these are the caruncles. Now, compared to the vaginal prolapse, the uterine prolapse, like I said, it hangs down past the hocks. It's covered in these buttons called the caruncles, and it only can happen after the cow calves typically directly after the cow has calved. So the big thing here when talking about uterine prolapses versus vaginal prolapses is uterine prolapses are more dangerous to the cow than the vaginal prolapse. The reason for this is, is this uterus being turned inside out, that cow has big blood vessels that are now outside of her body in this uterus. If any of those blood vessels are to get damaged, she could bleed out. This is something that needs to be addressed as soon as physically possible. The vaginal prolapse, on the other hand, is still an emergency that needs to be addressed in a timely manner, but is not as dangerous to the cow as the uterine prolapse. So to review the difference between these two easily confused types of prolapses, vaginal prolapse, uterine prolapse, vaginal prolapse, uterine prolapse, uterine prolapse, vaginal prolapse. Got it? Sometimes these prolapses decide to mix and match. For example, you might see a cow or heifers that have both a rectal prolapse and a vaginal prolapse. Both of these need to be corrected in order for the animal to be returned to full health. So you may have some other questions with regard to what to do about prolapses in cattle. Hey doc, can I rebreed that cow that had that vaginal prolapse? That's a great question, generic rancher Ron. And I would not keep this cow if she's had a vaginal prolapse. First off, this prolapse is liable to reoccur every year from here on out. Second, there's commonly a genetic linkage in causing these prolapses. So, in this case, I would utilize the single most powerful tool we have in the beef industry for genetic advancement. Put one of these in her ear. So folks, whatever type of prolapse your cow has, feel free to get a hold of one of your local Sioux Nation veterinarians. We can help you work through these and other types of emergencies that you can find with your cows or with your feedlot animals. 
Uh, the locations that we have veterinarians at that do emergency calls are Viberg, Scotland, Freeman, I got to think through them all, Kimball, and Chamberlain, and we also will work remotely at some of our other locations. So for herb work, emergencies, or troubleshooting disease situations, or looking for ways to improve your operation, feel free to get a hold of one of our veterinarians at Sioux Nation Ag Center. We will help your animals have the best health they can to feed that bottom line. So the rectal prolapse is a protuberance. In this case, oh my gosh. And the size is typically that of somewhere between a volleyball and a basket. Stupid. Not as immediate threat as to the, it's not as, it is 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 not as. And there goes the phone again. I'm gonna draw a cow. And from this cow. Stupid train.